Hey guys, welcome to another Server Miner plugin tutorial. I'm your host LCGym007, and today we're looking at the One in the Chamber mini game plugin. So this is a really awesome mini game, which is super easy to set up and configure. It's probably the best One in the Chamber one I've seen. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first of all, let's go ahead and do OITC help. That is going to show us all of the commands. Now, first of all, we can click any of these instead of typing them out, which is cool. So we can list the arenas. There is currently just one. But if we want to create our own, we can do OITC create and then an ID. So number two is what we're going to go for. Once we've done this, we can do OITC edit and then two. That's going to bring up the editor GUI. And up here, it lists everything we need to do. So the first thing is setting an end location once the game ends will be teleported here. So go to that point, open up the GUI and just click the first block. If we go ahead and then move to this blue location, this is going to be the lobby location, and open it up, you can see it is completed. So we've done that one, but we haven't set the lobby. So click it, and that will set the lobby location. If we open it up again, you can see both are now completed, and now we need to set the starting spawns. So depending on how many players you have, you may need to set quite a few. So by default, there's 10 players in the game, so we would need to set at least 10. But what we can do if we open up the GUI again is change the min and max players. So left click to decrease the number and right click to increase the number. So let's set it to five and that way we only need five spawns for our game. So the best thing to do is make these pretty random. So just spread them around that way people won't just be spawn killed. Um, so I've set five here. I might set one more here, click it and there we go. So we've got six spawns, but you can set as many as you want. Now that we've done that, we can actually set a sign, and all you need to do is look at the sign, open up the GUI, and click Add Game Sign. Easy as that. Once you've done that, we can actually set the map name, so we can use color codes and format codes. Um, for some reason, I wrote AN6 and AN B, which isn't going to work, so it's just going to be light blue. And there you go, it shows you what it currently is. And then we can either view the wiki, or we can register the arena. And it's as easy as that. It shows up on the sign, and that is done. So now we can actually join the arena by either clicking the sign or doing OITC join and then the ID. We're going to be teleported to the lobby and as you can see the sign has changed to say it is starting. So it's going to count down from 3, 2, 1 and we're going to be teleported into the map with the spawns we set. And we're equipped with a wooden sword, we have a bow and we have an arrow. So if we aim at my other account and shoot him, it's going to say plus one in the middle of the screen. And in chat, there's going to be a nice message. Now, if you miss the arrow or he's still respawning and has God mode, we are going to just whack him with a sword and then he is going to respawn elsewhere. It says we're on a two kill streak and on the bar on the right, the scoreboard, which you can just about see on my screen, um, shows various information as well. So now we're on a three kill streak. So if I try and whack him again, you notice he spawned in the same place, which is why it's good to set a ton of spawns. That way spawn killings don't really happen. And obviously the sword is very, very bad. So it takes a lot of hits to kill an opponent. There we go. And he's respawned somewhere else. So that is a quick look at how the game actually works. It works fantastically. It looks really good and there's no issues. So let's go ahead and hop over to the config file and see what we can change in there. So here we are in the SMPitnik control panel and as you can see there are quite a few YML files and there is an inventories folder up here which just saves your inventory. So the main ones you want to be looking at are of course the config.yml, we've just got the arenas which saves all the data, if you want to set up bungee cord you can or a MySQL database and then we've got stuff like stats, rewards and messages. So we'll go into the config.yml, that's the main one we want to be editing. And if we have a look in here, we can enable boss bar, which I think looks really nice. Then we've got how many seconds should we wait in the lobby before the game starts. So I think 60 is a bit much, maybe 10 to 20 seconds would be better. Then we've got the start time on a full lobby and then the classic gameplay time, so 10 minutes. Then do you want bungee cord activated, yes or no? Scroll down a bit more, inventory manager, so do you want it to save all of these elements it lists here, so your inventory, health, food, experience, etc. Then we've got the chat format, which can be edited in the messages.yml. Scroll down a bit more, and we've got the basic permissions people need to join games. 
and then you want to disable full damage and the leave command. Scroll down even more and then we've got rewards. Do you want to enable that? Yes or no. We'll take a look in the YML file in a bit. So let's enable that. Then we've got the winning score, which is 25, which is quite a lot, but depends how many people are playing. And we've got the fireworks when the game ends, which looks pretty cool. And you want people to have their name tags hidden? Yes or no. So let's take a look at the rewards.yml. If we go ahead and open this up, you can see there is a really cool feature where you can add a chance, so a percentage chance for something to happen. If we scroll down here, we've got a few different examples. So when the game ends, it will say map name has ended. When you get a kill, the economy plugin will give you $2 to the player. And there is a 10% chance to get another $8, which is cool. And then when you win and lose, it says I won the game or I lost the game. So what we could do here is add a chance when you win the game to get $1,000, for example. So the easiest way to do that is just copy and paste the previous one. And we've got 10% chance to give the player $1,000. Obviously, if you look up here, you can change it. So you could change the command to just give them diamonds or something. And then if you put P with a colon, it's going to be performed by the player as opposed to the console. So that is a quick look at the YML files. There's quite a few, but the main ones are the config and the rewards. If we go over to the Spigot page, you can see it was updated today. In fact, it was first released the 7th of July and it's updated from 1.12 to 1.16 and this cool image is down here and there is a very handy wiki so on here we've got all the commands and permissions and then FAQ as well but if you need a server to host it on check out serverminer.com for the best and cheapest hosting around but that's it for me subscribe like comment and I'll see you next time